to Cheddar, everyone. 2020 has been an innovative and successful year for the space industry. With about 39 commercial launches, space, those companies, going public, and SpaceX's historic crewed launch to the International Space Station from the U.S. soil for the first time since 2011, the industry blasting off. We've got a few companies to work with, and our next guest is going to help us do that. What does the future of space hold for 2021? That's the big question. Here to discuss, Rob Berger, Associate Editor of Popular Science. Rob, great to have you here with us today. Investment in the space industry is expected to hit record levels next year despite the pandemic. What do you anticipate the money will be used for? Well, you mentioned the most exciting things that have happened over this past year include, you know, SpaceX's most amazing launches. You know, we've seen SpaceX uh, bring astronauts up to the space station in uh, May, and we saw them do it again in uh, November. So we've seen a lot of uh, action from SpaceX bringing the astronauts up to the space station. And I think we're going to continue to see a lot of investment, you know, with NASA continuing to buy rides on SpaceX, for example. We've got Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic kind of doing their thing. We've got Boeing working as hard as it possibly can to get a working capsule. So there's a lot going on. As you said, there's a lot of investment and it's a really exciting time. You know, despite the pandemic, 2020 has been a really exciting time for space. Yeah, intergalactic ride hailing there. NASA hitching a ride with SpaceX, perhaps. Let's talk about some of the SpaceX missions, particularly. This was the first time that NASA handed over mission control to a private company, we should note. So what should we expect from SpaceX going into 2021 and Elon perhaps maybe combining some companies? Absolutely. So we did, you know, uh, in the history of NASA, we've only seen about five different vehicles that can take astronauts up to the space station. And now to have uh, SpaceX kind of among those with its Dragon capsule is really exciting. So going out, going forward to 2021, we're going to keep seeing Elon and keep seeing SpaceX doing their thing. You know, hopefully more astronaut launches, more cargo launches as needed. Um, uh, Elon must have been working on that big Starship thing that recently, you know, crashed and blew up. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening. And I think, you know, 2021 will just be a sequel to 2020 in the sense that we're going to keep seeing SpaceX plowing ahead with this exciting stuff. The United States has over 1,300 satellites orbiting the Earth right now, some of them launched from the 1980s. How is NASA maintaining this equipment right now? Right. This is a really cool story and something we highlighted in our Best of What's New Awards. Uh, Northrop Grumman launched a cool satellite recently called the Mission Extension Vehicle. And this satellite latched onto an old satellite that was running out of fuel. It kind of grabbed onto it and has provided the, uh, the thrust for that satellite for the next five years. And then after it lets go of that satellite, it can go ahead and rescue another satellite. And Northrop Grumman's actually launched a second uh, spacecraft since then, the Mission, Ex Mission Extension Vehicle 2 which will do the same thing. So it's really great to see, you know, instead of we've got, instead of old satellites kind of burning up when they lose their fuel, to see a new way of kind of breathing life into these old satellites. So that's been a, a really cool story from 2020 as well. Certainly, and, and over the summer in July, NASA launched the Perseverance rover scheduled to land on Mars in February, 2021. So what's the technology that's behind this new rover and, and what does NASA hope to learn from this mission? This rover is awesome. It's a lot like its predecessor in the sense that it's a large rover. It weighs one ton. It's nuclear powered. As you mentioned, it's going to uh, land there in February. Um, but it has some new sensors on it. It has a new spectrometer, a new laser, and it's going to look for signs of life on Mars, looks for signs of past or present life. Um, and so it's going to be doing that with its new, uh, with its new instruments. Um, and one of the other neat things that it can do is it can try to cache some rocks that it thinks might be interesting enough to kind of try to send back to Earth. So it'll do some rock caching. And then in some future mission, perhaps a spacecraft in the future will take those rocks and bring them back to Earth. So this new rover, which is called Perseverance, is going to help with that as well. OK, so anybody who has industry knowledge like you do, naturally, I'd like to ask them how soon until I've got a space travel rewards credit card, essentially because right now we're looking at space exploration. We've talked about space exploration, research, development, that continues to move forward. But the tourism side of this industry, that's what's exciting for a lot of people. And you're right that like Virgin Galactic is really interested in making that happen. They had a recent test uh, uh, not too long ago, earlier this month that didn't work out quite right. They had a problem with one of their rockets. Um, so space is kind of doing two things at the, same, at the same time right now. One is we're seeing these success stories from SpaceX and NASA with the rover. And 
uh, you know, as I said, SpaceX bringing the astronauts up to the space station. So we're going to see, you know, more opportunities going forward for tourists and regular folk to get up there. But at the same time, space is hard, as they say. It's dangerous. And so I don't think you're going to be having the credit card anytime soon that gets you the, the frequent <laughs> flyer miles in which you're orbiting the Earth. But, um, you know, it's going in that direction, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So it's both hopeful and it's difficult. And so with that in mind, I mean, that's the, the travel or tourism, if you will, component of it. But I, I suppose on the travel side, we had even had conversations in the past about vertical takeoff, vertical landing, what that could mean for SpaceX in reinventing a whole different side of the aerospace industry. And if they could indeed figure out a way to transport humans faster than even some flights that would be taken on a normal basis internationally, you know, what that could look like and what the realistic timeline for something like that is, do we know? Well, as a reporter and writer and editor who covers transportation a lot, I'm really excited about a lot of those themes that you just mentioned. You know, Elon Musk and the Starship, he's talked about ways of transporting people across the planet really quickly. There's a company called Boom Supersonic that's working on bringing supersonic travel back. Uh, you know, we've, you know, you've heard of the Concorde, of course, which doesn't fly anymore. Um, so this company called Boom is working on trying to find a way to create an, a new airplane sometime called Overture that may bring uh, people around the world at supersonic speeds. And then on a kind of more micro urban level, uh, there's eVTOLs that we've talked about before with, you know, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles that could transport somebody around a city quickly, uh, quieter and maybe even safer than a helicopter. So there's a lot of different things that we're always on the cusp of. A lot of times industry experts say we're five years away from this or that. (laughs) And that continues to unfortunately kind of always be the case. It's both exciting and we have to keep waiting. Perpetually five years away. My goodness, bad place to be in. But hopefully we will get there (laughs) one day soon, maybe five years from now. Rob Berger, associate (laughs) editor at Popular Science. Thanks so much for the time, Rob. We appreciate it.